All right, hi everyone. Welcome back. We're on step four now of solving the cube. We've now solved the first two layers. We're now on the last layer. And the way we're going to solve this is we're going to solve the four corners first. So our ultimate goal is to have the puzzle, by the end of this video, look like this. Where the four corners have all been solved. And the only thing left we need to solve then are the edge pieces. You know, if you're lucky, you may solve the corner pieces and then all of a sudden the edge pieces are in the right spot and you're done. Um, chances are, though, the edge pieces won't be solved and we'll then move on to step five, which solves the final edge pieces. So how do we do this? Well, the trick is, is we want to solve those corner pieces without messing up all our hard work on solving the first two layers. So we're going to come up with some special move sequences that move these pieces around without affecting everything else. So if you look at the move sequences that are listed on this page that you're watching the video in, um, you'll see that there's two move sequences, one called the corner three cycle and another called the corner twist. Those are the two move sequences that we're going to be using again and again on solving the corners in this last layer. So again, if you're not viewing this video in the embedded page, then I would suggest looking at the description below the video. If you're watching it in YouTube, clicking that link and that'll take you to the page which contains this video and all the other videos in the, in the series, as well as a list of all the move sequences that I've been using and some descriptions and information around that. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to put these corner pieces in their proper spots. Luckily enough, we have already one in the proper spot and the other three are not. So how are we gonna move those other three around? Well, you can see that this corner piece, yellow, red, it has to go here. This corner piece, white, red, has to go there and this one has to go here. So these corner pieces have to move around like this. I'm not even worrying about how they're rotated yet. I just know that I have to move them around into their proper locations before I can twist them into their proper orientations. So this is where I'd use the corner three cycle to rotate these ones around. So if you look at the corner three cycle move that's listed below this video, you'll see that it shows the direction going this way. So if you apply that move sequence that's listed there, it would rotate them in the clockwise direction. We want to go in the counterclockwise direction. How do we do that? Well, we would just do that move sequence backwards and make sure we invert every one of those moves. So right now it's listed as L, D inverse, L inverse, U, L, D, L inverse, U inverse. We would do it backwards and in reverse. So think about this. If you were to put on your socks and shoes, you would put on your socks first and then put on your shoes second. How would you do the opposite of that? How would you undo that? Well, you would have to take off your shoes first. So you're going backwards and you're doing the shoe thing. So if you started doing the socks, then the shoes, then to do it backwards, you'd have to do the shoes, then the socks. But not only that, you would have to do the opposite of putting on, you'd have to take off. So you'd have to invert that as well. So we do things backwards and invert them. So put on socks, put on shoes, take off shoes, take off socks. So you read that sequence backwards and do the opposite of each move. So you would do a U, L, D inverse, L inverse, U inverse, L, D, L inverse. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We would do a U, L, D inverse, L inverse, U inverse, L inverse, or sorry, L, I'm reading it backwards and I've got to invert them. So L, D, L inverse. And if we look, that corner is in the right spot. It's the orange yellow one. It's in the right, uh, right location, just not the right orientation. That one is the yellow, red, yellow, red, good. Red, white, red, white, good. All the corners are in their proper locations, just not the proper orientations yet. So I will do that a couple more times. I'm gonna do it on a solved puzzle so you can see really what we're doing here. 
So let's look at the corner three cycle that's listed uh, just below this video. And that is the one that takes them in the clockwise direction. So what is it doing? Well, I'm, I'm essentially what I'm doing here is I'm breaking apart this move sequence so that it doesn't seem mysterious as to where it's coming from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to move it there. So I do that by bringing the elevator down, moving it into the elevator, sending the elevator up. So it brought that piece there. If I undo this sequence, what happens if I do it backwards? Well, it's just going to send that piece here, right? So I bring it down, send it across, elevator back up. So it just sent that piece there. Ah, so let's do it again. So we're going to send this piece up there. If I do it backwards, again, let's think carefully about this. If I do it backwards, it sends this piece here and it restores everything else. All the other pieces get restored. That's nice because if it all it does is to the top layer is send that piece there and then restores everything else in those bottom two layers. Well, before I do it, maybe I should do this. Send that corner piece here because what doing that first move sequence backward is going to do, it's going to send this piece over here and it's going to restore the bottom. So let's think carefully about that again. Okay. So I'm going to send this piece up here. Now I'm going to bring this piece over here and do that first sequence backwards, which will send that piece down here. Now I've done that sequence backwards. Then I'm going to undo the move that brought this corner piece over here before it sent it here. So I'm going to do that. And now we see that it affected only those three corner pieces. So if we do it again, it sent them once more in the clockwise direction. So the green white one is now down here. So the first time I applied it, it went here. The next time it went here, the yellow blue one went here. And then the next time I apply it here and the yellow green one went there and the second application sent it over here. So if you want to think about it this way, if I do two clockwise twists, that's the same as one counterclockwise. So there's a couple of options to doing the counterclockwise. We could do two clockwise ones. And if I do one more, then it restores it all. So I can do two of those clockwise ones, or I can do the inverse of that corner three cycle. That means do everything backwards and invert every, uh, every one of those face twists. There's another way to think about doing that inverse, and it is instead of sending this one here first, let's send it there first. But I'm going to do it by sending it there by doing a transition through that one. So rather than bringing the elevator down and loading it up, I'm going to move the upper face first, bring it over here. Now bring the elevator down and load it up and then send it upstairs. And now undo the move, that up move that brought it over. And then do the elevator move again, bring it down, send it over, send it up. And that sent them in the counterclockwise direction. Everything else is where it's supposed to be. So let's do that one again. I'm going to do counterclockwise move. I want this piece to go up here. So I'm going to transition through that one over, send that one down, bring it across, send it up, undo that move that brought it over there, and then undo that elevator stuff again. And it advanced them once more around. So if I do it again, bring it across, down, over, send it up, across, and we're back to where we started. So that's the corner three cycle, doing it in the clockwise direction, which is as listed, or doing it the inverse of it, which produces a counterclockwise twist. Okay, so we're back to this puzzle. We've got them all in their proper locations. Now there's a few things that could happen. Let's, I'm just gonna mess this up a little bit. So what I've done, since it was really 
easy for me to set my corners. They just happened to have one three cycle and they were all in their proper locations. I've just messed the puzzle up a little bit more because chances are it won't be that easy for yours. So what I'm looking at is trying to put these corner pieces into their right locations. I scan around and I see, okay, first of all, can I put any one of them in this proper location? Well, there we go. I've got one in the proper location. So hopefully, you know, fingers crossed that the other three are out by at most a three cycle. And then I can use that either clockwise or counterclockwise three cycle to put them in their place. So I look wrong place. That one needs to go over here. This one needs to go. Oh, it needs to switch with those one. Oh, and that one's in its proper place. So what I need to do is I need to swap these two while leaving these two fixed. If you look at that list of moves I have, I only have one listed there, and that is a corner three cycle. Now the reason I've only listed one there is again, this is a beginner solution. I don't want to list a whole bunch of different sequences depending on, you know, if you have two in the place, how do we swap just two? I didn't want to do all of that. I just wanted to have the bare minimum of move sequences that are required to solve the puzzle from any configuration. So the power in this solution is that there's minimal memorization. You only need four moves, essentially, and you can solve any scrambling of the puzzle. So how do we use those three cycles then? So what I'll do is I'll just apply a three cycle and see what happens. I mean, you can be a bit more strategic with this, but what I'll do is I'll just apply a three cycle and see what happens. So I apply a three cycle to any of them, to any three of them. Okay, so I've done that three cycle move. Now I look at it and now I try to put one in its place. And I look around and I say, that's not in the right spot. That one needs to go here. This one needs to go here. This one needs to go here. Ah, excellent. I'm now at the stage where I need to just apply a three cycle. So before I was at a stage where I needed to swap to, so I just did a th some random three cycle. You know, you can be a little bit strategic and think about where they're going to move when you do the three cycle, but you just do a three cycle. And then hopefully when you place one in its proper location, the other three will be out by a three cycle, in which case you can do one more three cycle to get it. So I need that one to go up here. So I'm going to rotate them in the clockwise direction. So applying that three cycle move sequence. And now everything, every corner is in its proper location. It just needs to be twisted into its proper orientation. Now we're going to do those twist corner twisting moves. The corner twisting moves are allowing us to twist two corners in opposite directions. It's listed as it twists this one in the clockwise direction and this one in the counterclockwise direction. Now, if you see what's going on here is I need to th twist three pieces in the, each one of them has to go in the clockwise direction. My move sequence doesn't show how to do that. I've only given you one and it's just how to twist two corners in opposite directions, but that's fine because we can do this in stages. We could twist this one and this one and then twist this one and this one. If I twist this one clockwise, it goes into its proper location, uh, proper orientation. This one gets twisted counterclockwise, which sends it over here. And then I stare at these two and I need to send this one up top. That would be a counterclockwise twist. This one would be a clockwise twist. So that would be the inverse of the moves that I've listed there. So let's go ahead and do this. Again, the, the list, the moves that are listed there, you know, it, it's great to write them in symbol form because they're easier to, um, put in writing and communicate with other people. But I understand that reading that sometimes it loses the insight as to how they were developed. So I'm going to try to focus in this video on what the insight was in, in developing those moves. So the idea was I want to twist that one. I want to twist this corner clockwise. So let's do that. I'm going to bring it down using one elevator and bring it up using the other elevator. And I'm just going to make sure I keep that sticker on the side because I eventually want it up top. So I bring it down using one elevator. I want to pick it up using the other one. There's only one spot this guy can hide in the lower level, which isn't going to be on either elevator. And that's way back here, way back here. So here's what we do. We bring it down, send it all the way to the back, hide it back here, bring that elevator back up, bring the other elevator down to bring it onto that elevator to send it back up. Now I've twisted it. So the only thing I have to remember at this stage is I use the left elevator first 
and the front elevator second. What if I do it in reverse? What if I send it down using the front elevator and then pick it up using the left elevator? Well, it's just going to undo that move sequence I just did, which means it's going to fix everything in the bottom, which is all messed up now, and you might be having a panic because we've messed up all our good hard work. But if I bring it down using the front, pick it up again using the left elevator, it's going to restore everything in the bottom because it's just going to undo the move sequence we did to mess it up. And it'll twist this piece in the opposite direction. It'll twist it counterclockwise. I don't want to twist that, twist that one counterclockwise. I want to twist this one counterclockwise. So I move it into its place. Now I undo that first move sequence. Front elevator down, hide it in the back, front elevator up, left elevator down. Bring it out of hiding, load it in, send it back up, and then undo the move sequence that brought it over there. And now you can see that we restored that one. First of all, maybe I should show you. Yeah, we restored everything else in the bottom. We restored that one, but we twisted this one, which did have the green sticker over here, put it over here. Now when I stare at this, I see, oh, I only have two corners left to twist. I have to move this one counterclockwise and this one clockwise. I'm going to play that elevator trick again. Again, the, the move sequence is listed there, and we do this one in reverse because I need to go counterclockwise with this one and clockwise with this one. But I'm trying to give you the insight into how those were developed because I think this is the much more important part. This shows the understanding of those moves, and then you can probably start to see how to develop your own. What I'm going to do is I'm going to restore this one. How do I do this? I'm going to send it down on the elevator, which keeps the green sticker on the side because I eventually want it up top. So I'm going to ride the front elevator down, hide in the back, front elevator up, left elevator down, load it in, send it up. It, twist, it twisted this one into its proper location. If I undo that sequence, it'll untwist that one and restore the bottom. I don't want to untwist that one. I want to untwist that one. So I bring it over. Now I reverse the moves that twisted this one. Left elevator this time, hide in the back, front elevator. come back out, load into the elevator, send it back up, and then undo that up move that brought it across. And there you go. We are now solved the first two layers and the last layer corners. We're now on to step five, which is the edges.